Right. Those are the sentiments of President Uhuru Kenyatta and also uh, DPP responding to that question of revisiting. Mr. Nthiankolu, the question is why now? Uh, I think the DPP is being naive. Uh, it may well be that he's an independent office. It may well be that uh, he has made this decision based purely on the law and the evidence. Unfortunately, that is not how fair-minded, reasonable human beings uh, would see this move when you piece together all the dots. And the truth is that um, there have been many telltale signs of uh, this revisiting. Uh, we began with the uh, attempt on the life of the deputy CJ, the shooting incidents. Recently, there has been a cut on judiciary uh, budget, uh, which is inexplicable and unjustifiable on any rational thinking. There have been this movement to, uh, by the executive to, to, to insist that certain representatives to the Judicial Service Commission must be vetted by Parliament, mm -hmm. even if that has not been the, the law, because at our constitutional design, uh, representatives to JSC elected, say, by the Law Society of Kenya, they derive their mandate from the electing constituency. They don't need a parliamentary approval. Uh, those are elected by the Judges and Magistrates Association. As we speak today, those people have not been gazetted mm -hmm. because there has been a start of the executive insisting that uh, their names must be taken to Parliament mm -hmm. for approval. And that is not a correct reading of our Constitution. Now, you tie it with this development. Unfortunately for the DPP, there are too many dots uh, that when uh, uh, anyone who has a brain joins mm -hmm. can see the hand of a state that is hell-bent on either revisiting as the president threatened or controlling the judiciary. Uh, and, and therefore, for me, that's why I said the, the, the issue at hand is not whether the DCJ has committed these offenses, mm -hmm. because whether she has committed them or not, given the context, social, political, and economic context of the day, mm -hmm. this is one of those cases where the DPP can only look bad, where the fight against corruption can only lose its legitimacy. But, the DPP, <laughs> but the DPP yesterday made it very clear, because mm. that was the concern that every Kenyan had in mind. Yes. Is it about revisiting? But he made it clear. Yes. The arrest of the DCJ... Yes does not it's it's not even connected to the statement that was issued no one no one is doubting his clarity i'm just saying that uh, better judgment would have told him whether he was acting independently or not this was the wrong judgment call for him the thing he should have done uh, and he's a fairly senior lawyer he knows the correct procedure is take his evidence this dossier he has to the judicial service commission who would have invoked the mechanism set out in our constitution mm -hmm. for dealing with the errant judges. Okay. Why that process is being circumvented mm -hmm. when that has not been the norm. You see, we, unfortunately, we also have precedents. When mm -hmm. judges in the past have misbehaved, mm -hmm. we went through the constitutional route of directing the matter to the Judicial Service Commission, mm -hmm. the commission investigating, recommending the establishment of a tribunal, mm -hmm. and the tribunal deciding the matter one way or another. Okay. Okay. So just uh, to remind our viewers that uh, some of the live pictures that you're getting right now on your screen are from Milimani Court because this morning um, uh, the Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu is expected to take plea. And as you can see, her lawyers are already in court and uh, our reporter Francis Ontoma informed us when we were having an interaction with him that the DCJ is already in court. So any time from now, we expect the court proceedings to begin. And just to tell you that, as you can see, um, uh, Senior Counsel James Orengo is uh, part of the team that is representing the legal team that is representing the DCJ. Uh, so we shall continue giving you um, latest update as and when we get them. And, uh, of course, uh, we shall ensure that you get those live shoots on your screen as you can see them right now. So any time from now, the DCJ is expected to take plea and his lawyers are also, and her lawyers, rather, are already in court just to, you know, argue out their case when it comes to the 13 charges leveled against the DCJ, one of them being forgery, the other one being, um, you know, mis uh, abuse of office and also a failure to pay tax. And... Um,
in a studio just remind you we're talking uh, to the uh, to an advocate of the of the court that is uh, Muthomin Thiankolu who's just giving a, as an insight of uh, the charges leveled against the DCJ following her arrest and Thiankolu people are wondering is it succession politics at play over here it could be succession politics, uh, it could be 2022 politics, uh, it could be the revisiting, uh, it could be personal data. But for me, you see, the, the, the mistake the DPP has done is to invite us or to, to take a decision that invites all this speculation. Because the, the, the fighting of crime should be merely about law enforcement. Uh, and nothing else. The moment you you take decisions that lead people to start wondering, like everyone now is wondering, whether this is really about fighting corruption mm -hmm. or other extraneous matters, that the fact that we're having that discussion alone is evidence that perhaps this was not the best uh, move. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was still telling you the million and one reasons. The truth of the matter is that uh, there have been rumors uh, for a long time about corruption creeping back in the judiciary. None other than the, chief, the former Chief Justice himself, uh, uh, Willie Mutunga, came to the media saying that uh, judges of the Supreme Court and other courts were buying luxury houses in certain tax havens and whatnot. Uh, in 2016, we had this uh, story about uh, some allegedly 200 million shilling being delivered at a petrol station. And you would have thought if this was really about fighting corruption in the mm -hmm. judiciary, how come nobody has acted on those allegations emanating from the head of the judiciary himself, mm -hmm. uh, but suddenly uh, things that uh, uh, look very questionable mm -hmm. uh, become the center of attraction and uh, heightened activity on the part of the state prosecution service. So, so for me, the, the, the real mistake is uh, by failing to exercise proper judgment, because it is not the case that uh, the, the DPP must prosecute every crime and secure conviction in every offense and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The truth is that the decision to prosecute and not to prosecute mm -hmm. is a matter in exercise of judgment. Our okay. constitution itself, uh, recognizes that by saying that the DPP shall not be subject to the direction or control or influence of any other person or authority. Okay, so what is the role of the Judicial Service Commission? Usually when these complaints are taken to the Judicial Service Commission, the Commission will form a committee of its members to deliberate upon the evidence. And if they form that preliminary view, that there may be some merit in the allegations being leveled against the judge, in this case the Deputy Chief Justice, they will write to the President telling him that uh, this complaint has been received by the Commission. We believe it's not a frivolous complaint and therefore we are advising the Head of State to form a tribunal mm -hmm. that will investigate these matters mm -hmm. and make a decision on the suitability of this judge to remain in office in view of the allegations. Okay. And we've gone that route. There are many presidents. Recently, we've done that for Justice Mutava. Uh, we did that, uh, of course, uh, not exactly in the way the current constitution says, but in the so-called vetting of judges and magistrates, mm -hmm. we had a similar process. And in short, the long and short of it all for our viewers, there is a constitutional process and mechanism for dealing with this type of problem, and it is not the one the DPP has chosen. So according to you, yes. the DPP should have taken the, uh, the, the case of uh, the DCJ to the Judicial Service Precisely. Commission? Precisely. Not going the... the no, not going the route is gone. The, 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 of course, some people will tell you that uh, there is nothing technically wrong. And that's the, 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 the tragedy we have in this country where people love splitting ears and saying the law is very clear or there is no law prohibiting this or my, my decision is purely within the four corners of the law. There is more to law 
than being to able to fit your decision within the grammatical meaning of the various statutes. Mm -hmm. That's why I keep saying law is about exercise of judgment, exercise of discretion. It's about context. Mm -hmm. It's about perception. Mm -hmm. It's about the history and circumstances. So for someone to just take a decision uh, and tell you, yes, there is a law and the law supports my decision or does not prohibit it, even the good book says that for me some things, uh, everything is permissible, but not all of them okay. are beneficial. Okay. Now the, <laughs> now the DPP takes the the case to the court, not yes. to the Judicial Service Commission. Yes. Yes. So now what happens next for JC when it comes to this case of DCJ? Unfortunately, we're in a, sta in a start still. We, we, the DPP has placed us in an awkward position. Under our laws, if the DCJ is, or even a public officer for that matter, is charged with corruption or whatever, they are deemed to be suspended. Yet, uh, for judges, there is a special mechanism. They are only suspended through the route of going through the JSC and the establishment of a tribunal. Mm -hmm. So that we immediately have this gray area and all these constitutional questions. Mm -hmm. uh, should the DCJ continue being in office while these proceedings are going on? Uh, or should she step aside? Should she be suspended? Mm -hmm. Should she resign? And remember, we must, we must always count why I believe this is also unfair. Anytime we charge anyone with an offense, we must work with the presumption that this person is innocent mm -hmm. until the prosecution proves. As we speak now, our law is that the DCJ is innocent until she is proven guilty. Yet the reality on the ground is that she holds a position mm -hmm. where uh, if there are certain allegations circulating around like they are doing about corruption, mm -hmm. are continuing to hold that position becomes untenable. So are we likely to see the DCJ resign? Because, of course, from today henceforth, pressure will pile on her to step aside until she's proven, you know, because I, I don't as, know as we speak right now, aside. she's innocent until proven guilty. So are we likely to see her resign? I, I don't know what, what decision she will make. Uh, all I know is that uh, the decision has placed us in a, in a legal difficult situation uh, because if she chose not to resign, unfortunately, uh, she will be within her rights. Uh, she's presumed innocent and they'll proven guilty. Yet there will be an equally powerful argument that by what account can you hold a position in which you're supposed to be above reproach mm -hmm. uh, and in which you're supposed to be perceived as above reproach where there are all these allegations against you. Okay. So for me, the unfairness is that uh, we've been dragging people's reputations and careers through the mud mm -hmm. just because we don't want to follow the procedures and the processes established in our constitution okay. for exterior or political reasons, whatever the expediency mm -hmm. that is informing the deviation, mm -hmm. because I keep repeating, this decision is not the norm. That's not okay. the normal way of to, dealing with, with this, this problem. kind of a case. Just to remind our viewers um, that uh, those are live pictures from uh, Milimani Court. And uh, you, as you can see on your screen, uh, the judge has already arrived in court. The DCJ, that is the Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu, is also in court. She's expected to take plea today, and her lawyers are also in court. Uh, led by senior counsel James Orengo. So I'd just like us to cross over to Milimani High Court and listen in to what is happening there. Francis Karimi? Present. Atalas Karioki? Victor Wahome? Present. Elijah Rwanda? John Wangi? Present. Caroline Kitunyi? Peter Nganga, Gladys Mwikali, Obadia Mbugwa, Present. David Some, Present. Esther Chebet, Esther Chebet, Dasahe Investments, Keikomi Investment, Lomotit Estate Limited, Tom Aziz. Yes. 
Chanar who appears for the second accused person. So they appear for the first and the second accused person. <coughs> All right, those are live pictures for you right from Milimani Law Courts where the case of uh, the Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu has uh, started. Uh, remember, she's supposed to take plea today and she's being charged. Uh, she has 13 charges leveled against her. Just to mention a few is a forgery and uh, the other one is failure to pay tax and also abuse of office. As you can see, she's already in court, uh, ready to take her plea and argue out her case through her lawyers. So we shall be crossing over there later on just to listen in to what's happening. But in the studio this morning, just to remind us that we're talking to advocate of the High Court, Muthomin Thiankolu, who's just giving us an insight of the case of the DCJ. And Mr. Thiankolu, uh, 